Nice launch check on countdown net, pad is clear. N, nine, eight, launch auto sequence seven, has started. Six, five, four, three, two, one. Go for launch. Separation confirmed. Stage one is transonic. Landing legs have deployed. And Falcon 9 has landed. Hello everyone and happy Thursday. Thanks for tuning in to watch our next Starlink launch. Falcon 9 is set to deliver another 46 Starlink satellites to orbit from Vandenberg Space Force Base at Pad 4 East in California. Today's mission marks SpaceX's 26th launch of the year and 225th overall mission to date. My name is Zachary Lupin, and I'm an avionics reliability engineer here at SpaceX. Now, for those of you following along, you'll know we stood down from our launch attempt yesterday to evaluate Falcon 9 recovery da data. And since then, our engineers have scrubbed the data, and all systems are looking good for today's attempt. And we are now proceeding with a T0 time of 6.40 a.m. Pacific. Now, despite the foggy views on your screen around the rocket, um, weather is looking good, and the range is also ready to support. On the left side of your screen is the rocket, and on the right is a view of the California coast at Vandenberg. Additionally, the teams are currently tracking no issues with the vehicle or spacecraft.
Now, while it's a bit difficult to see on your screen, adjacent to our Falcon 9 rocket is the Transporter Erector, or TE, which has clamp arms that are currently working to uh, open up around the payload fairing on the vehicle. These clamp arms hold the rocket in place while we prep for launch. Once those clamp arms are open, the transporter erector will then move away from the rocket in preparation for launch. And aside from holding the vehicle in place, the transporter erector is also used for vehicle rollout and to route propellants and electrical power to the vehicle in preparation for launch. Stage one, lock flow complete. At T minus three minutes, the Falcon 9 first stage is fully loaded with RP1 and locks, and we are currently awaiting completion of locks load on the second stage in about 50 seconds from now. Once that is complete, this will conclude propellant loading on the vehicle. During a clear day, we may see some white clouds around the body of the rocket, and those clouds are completely normal. During propellant loading, we vent cold gas that forms above the LOX tank surface, and what you see is the result of that cold gas coming into contact with the warmer California air and then condensing. So while we might not see it, we may hear little hisses from time to time. And coming up next will be the callout that second stage locks loading is complete. The booster you see on your screen is flying for the 13th time stage today. Stage 2 lock load complete. And there's that call out that second stage locks loading is complete. Falcon 9 is now fully loaded with 1 million pounds of fuel and liquid oxygen. And as I mentioned earlier, the uh, booster on your screen is flying for its 13th time today, having pre previously supported two NASA crew missions, CRS-23, Series XM-8, XB, two transporter missions, Global Star FM-15, Aero C-3, and three Starlink missions. Falcon 9 is in startup. There's that call out that Falcon 9 is in startup. LD is go for launch. And as you just heard, the launch director has given the final go to proceed for launch. So let's sit back and watch as Falcon 9 takes our 46 Starlink satellites into space. T minus 30 seconds. is pitching down range. Stage one chamber pressure is nominal. At T plus 30 seconds, Falcon 9 has successfully lifted off from Vandenberg Space Launch Complex 4 East at 6.40 a.m. Pacific time.
Falcon 9 is supersonic. And there's that call out that Falcon 9 is supersonic. Next up will be a call out for Max Q. Max Q. And there's that call out for Max Q. This is when the vehicle is experiencing the greatest amount of external stresses at, as it ascends through the Earth's atmosphere. Now we're, we're about one minute away Impact from show. a series of events. Miko, stage SEP, SES-1, and fairing separation. Miko, or main engine cutoff, is where all nine of the Merlin 1D engines on the first stage shut down. That's followed by stage separation, when the first and second stages separate from one another. That is then followed by SES-1, or second engine start one, where we light the Merlin vacuum engine on the second stage. And finally, we will have fairing separation when the two fairing halves separate and fall away from the second stage. So keep an eye out for all of these events, which are going to happen in pretty rapid succession. Miko. Stage separation confirmed. I'm back in mission. And there were those callouts for Miko, stage sep, and SES-1. We should have fairing separation here shortly. Fairing separation confirmed. And there's that callout for fairing separation. Now we will be attempting to recover both fairing halves using our recovery vessel, NRC Quest, today. Both of the fairing halves flying on today's mission are flight Both proven. Both vehicles are following nominal trajectories. Are flight proven with one half flying for the sixth time and the other flying for its seventh time. Now on the left side of your screen is the Falcon 9 first stage and on the right side is the second stage. The Falcon 9 first stage will be making its way back down to Earth and the right uh, side, the second stage, will be carrying our Starlink satellites into orbit. Now, currently, the first stage is on its way back to Earth towards our drone ship, Of Course I Still Love You. If successful, this will mark our 187th overall landing of an orbital-class rocket. On the right side of your screen, attached to the second stage, you can clearly see that MBAC engine. Uh, it'll be continuing its burn for the next several minutes uh, to get our Starlink satellites into orbit. As I mentioned earlier, today's Starlink mission marks SpaceX's 225th mission overall and 26th mission just this year. Now we've got some phenomenal views of our Falcon 9 first stage on the left side of your screen and the second stage on the right. The first stage has reached its apogee and is now on its way back towards Earth while the second stage uh, continues to speed up as it goes around the Earth. As a reminder, Starlink Both is... vehicles continue to follow nominal trajectories. As a reminder, Starlink is a satellite internet constellation designed and manufactured by SpaceX to provide high-speed, low-latency internet to people living in remote and rural locations around the globe. And coming up in the next 20 seconds or so, we should see that entry burn startup on the first stage, which will be on the left side of your screen.
Stage one FTS has saved. The first stage used to launch our 46 Starlink satellites into space today is flying for its 13th time today, having supported two NASA crew missions, CRS-23, Series XM-8, XP, two transporter missions, Global Star FM-15, Aero C-3, and three Starlink missions. Both vehicles continue to follow nominal trajectories. And while we didn't hear the call out, we did have a successful entry burn on the stage one transonic. Stage. And there's that call out that the first stage is transonic, which means it is traveling near the speed of sound. Up next is going to be the stage, stage two one. FTS is saved. Is going to be the stage one landing burn, which we'll see on the left side of your screen there. Stage one, landing burn. Stage two, terminal guidance. And there's confirmation that that stage one landing burn has started in preparation for our land for landing on our drone ship. Of course, I still love you in the Pacific. Stage one, landing leg deploy. And there you saw on your screen, Falcon 9 has successfully landed on stage our drone ship. Stage one, landing ship. confirmed. On our drone ship, of course, I still love you in the Pacific Ocean. This marks our 187th overall landing of an orbital class rocket. Expected loss of signal, Vandenberg. Including Falcon 9 and Falcon Heavy missions. MVEX right there. And if you heard those callouts, we also had successful Seco 1. And we're currently awaiting nominal, nominal orbit insertion. And there's that callout for nominal orbital insertion. So with confirmation of landing and good orbit from our second stage, that wraps up our coverage for today's Starlink launch. So be sure to check our social media for confirmation of Starlink deployment. And if you're looking for some extra entertainment later this afternoon, be sure to tune in for Falcon Heavy's launch of the Viasat-3 Americas mission set for a 7.29 p.m. Eastern Time launch from Launch Complex 39A at NASA's Kennedy Space Center in Florida. As always, thanks for watching, and we'll see you again soon.